What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to answer a couple questions that I keep getting a million messages on. So let's get into it. All right, guys, I'm going to go over a few pre-treatment, pre-prep thoughts that I have that we do here that can save you guys some time and maybe expel some of the uh, crap you find on Facebook and other places in these group things. So you gotta take every piece of advice with a little bit of grain of salt, because maybe the way I do it isn't the way other big powder coaters do it. Well, we're not big, but medium powder coaters, big, huge powder coaters, um, like OEMs and stuff like that, they're all, everyone's gonna do it a little bit different. Um, but I get so many messages, so many text messages and people wanting to reach out and talk to me. I can't get back to all of you guys, so this is the easiest way. I actually just had another guy this last week that wanted like a half hour consultation and um, we actually set up a Venmo, which I never even had before, just so I can kind of get reimbursed for my time. I didn't put a price on it, but he was way more than generous uh, when he did hit that. Uh, but anyways, we might be setting some up like that. If you guys want to set some up, maybe just email me for now. The email's down below, I believe. Um, and we can set some up, but we're going to go into how we pre-treat parts. Um, and yes, this works for most parts, but every part's going to be a little different. Sometimes you're going to have a super, super greasy part and you need to probably wash that off before you take it into blast or before you actually start your process of phosphating it. You can't use one process for everything. It's not always going to work, but let's go out in the shop. I'll kind of show you our setup. Um, you guys, if you saw the wash bay, we kind of built a ridge around the floor to keep the water where I wanted it. We haven't built the little walls I talked about in that video. We just haven't had time. Um, I got to freaking look at the lighting on this thing more. Sorry about that. Um, so let's get out there. Let's take a look at what we use. Now, if you're going to set up something like this, you're going to need to talk to distributors and uh, vendors. Uh, that's what we do. We rely heavily on them. So let's go look. All right. So this is our wash bay that if you saw the last video, you would have seen it. We do a couple of things here. Now, um, this was a great idea, but it has been nothing but problems. I don't know why. Um, this is a just like a weed sprayer you'd put on ATV, but it has a chemical tank so that it can mix in the valve setup. So we've had nothing but leaks, issues with keeping it primed and all this other stuff. So we go back to Old Faithful, the pump sprayer. Right now we're using Zep Industrial Grease, uh, or degreaser. You can get this at like... You can get this stuff at like Menards. It's like 44 bucks. It makes a ton. Uh, but that's what we're using right now. We'll spray it on the part. If the part's excessively greasy, we use these little scotch brights and we'll go hand scrub the parts, get them clean. If you could take your finger and wipe it across that part and there's black on it, it's not clean. Also, there's a water break test where if it's beating up on it, it's not clean because there's contaminants on that part and they're holding that water that way so the water should be sheening off the part when you're cleaning it so after we do that we have a chemical that we run through our power washer i get back here so this is a phosphate from uh, lincoln chemical you can look them up online it's link Foss whatever whatever four four six five plus we inject this into our pressure washer after it goes through the coil and we spray it hot about 150 uh, 40 or 60 degrees um, but the nice thing about working with a company like that is they'll send their local distributor out and he'll sit there and test it with you so he came out he's he's probably spent a day with us showing us how to wash parts making sure we're washing parts right making sure our pH is right all that kind of stuff our temperatures right um, so that's all you really need to do for the majority of your parts is wash and phosphate we don't sandblast any of our major major parts such as our uh, like all of our brackets and everything we do for industrial it just wouldn't make money they're not going to be out seeing a lot of abuse they actually get put together and shoved in a wall so you got to talk to whoever your customer is are they gonna a motorcycle yes we blast everything on a motorcycle wheels we blast the wheels we want the best grip we can get from that paint to that substrate on those sorts of things so with wheels motorcycle parts anything steel we're going to wash it, get it clean, 
with wheels or painted parts, we put them into our green solve tank and we let them strip. We bring them out, rinse them off. We put them in the oven and we let them dry. When they come out, we will do a wash with our degreaser again, and then a phosphate rinse, blow them off. That's why we have our garden hose and our airline in our wash bay because we rinse off the phosphate, blow them off, and then they go back in the oven for 10, 15 minutes to completely dry before we apply powder. Most of the time we're gonna let those parts cool all the way down. Now if they have really bad Faraday areas and we've struggled with them in the past, we're going to hit those spots real quick and then let it cool down and coat the rest. Again, you can't use the same process for everything. The more you guys do this, the more you're gonna figure out what works for you. But some of you guys are wiping parts down with acetone or lacquer or whatever it may be and you don't need to do it. We never take a rag to a part and wipe it down because you're just setting yourself up for failure with lint, cross-contamination. I mean, if there's something on that rag and you wipe it on there, it's now on that part. So we do not do that. If you guys go into any professional shop that's running like conveyor systems or batch systems, they are not wiping their parts down. I guarantee it. They are not taking acetone to the part. They are either blasting it, blowing it off, washing it, drying it, or they're going straight into the degrease phosphate rinse dry that is all you need to do to prep your parts so please stop wiping your parts down i don't everyone on these youtube uh comments is like you don't wipe your parts down we wipe our parts down you don't have to wipe your parts down so we have no issues and i think a lot of that stems from the fact we aren't brushing stuff on like that so um hopefully that clears up some of your pre <sighs> You gotta love the air dryer. Hopefully that <laughs> clears up some of your guys' uh, process questions on how we do things. Now, I can't tell you how we process exact parts because every part is going to be different again. I was blasting today, it's Saturday. I don't know why I'm at work. But anyways, um, if you guys have any questions, you can always type them up, but I, like I said, I get so many direct hits to me along with all the videos, and you know what we got going on here, we're super busy. Um, it, it's probably a better situation and that guy. I, I hope I helped him um, He paid me like he got some good advice, but um, if you want to set up a consultation um, We can set up like a half-hour Conversation you can come prepared with all your questions and everything and then I'll give you our processes how we do it and We'll help you out that way. Um, we try to answer if you're on our patreon page It's probably a way cheaper way to get some answers from me, but I may not be as quick or um, the back and forth takes longer but if you set up a membership on there i always answer those it may take a day or two but i always answer them so that's all i got that's it i'm tired i'm out of breath i wasn't planning on doing this but then i just saw all these emails come through and i'm like oh my god it's all the same questions so i hope you guys enjoyed subscribe like all that fun stuff we'll catch you guys later i gotta go back to work